If you read security news, it probably just seems like ransomware just keeps getting worse and worse. So you might be asking, why is this happening? And the reasoning is twofold. Now, typically how criminals would make money is via bank fraud. They would hack into company network, usually by malware, and then they would transfer large sums of money out of the company bank account to their own. The problem with this one is you need uh, money mules to be online to launder the money and receive the payments because they're obviously not going to transfer directly to their own personal bank accounts. So you would have to build a network of mules and then you would have issues with the banks would often block transactions to unknown accounts or the company themselves would do it. And then with the advancement of uh, security protocols like two-factor authentication, you would actually need someone to manually initiate the transfer. So what they'd have to do is sit on the network for maybe weeks on end, wait till accounting does a transfer, then as the transfer is going through, they would hijack it in the background, uh, replacing the destination bank account with the bank account of their mule and the money with usually some larger amount. Now this was profitable, but there was a high failure rate. They would have to sit in the network for weeks on end, which risked their malware being detected. Transfers could be blocked, bank accounts could be sanctioned, mules could be arrested. It required a lot of moving parts just to make a decent amount of money. So what they found out was with ransomware, you can just ransom a company and then because they are actually initiating the payment to you, that is going to go through. The bank is not going to block it because they're going to call out the bank and they're going to say, hey, why are you blocking this payment? Like we need this payment to go through. So they, as they found out ransomware was a more effective way to get money with a lot less wait time and not having to lurk inside the network as long, attackers started pivoting to ransomware. Now that shouldn't have been as much of a problem as it is today, but there's a second point, and that is that a lot of the criminals are inside of Russia. And Russia has a policy of not extraditing the, uh, Russian nationals to foreign countries. Uh, they also have a unwritten rule where basically if you do not target Russian systems or systems in neighboring countries like Ukraine, they don't really care what it is you do. In fact, it's beneficial to them because America is the largest economy. Ransomware groups will naturally target American companies because there's just more money to be made. And the nice thing about that is, is they're taking money away from American companies and then putting it into the Russian economy. And it's very hard to prosecute them because they'll put up an indictment, Russia will just say whatever, and they'll just ignore them. And it's very hard to sanction the country for things their criminalists are doing because it's not necessarily state sanctioned. It's not like they're saying, hey, we need you to go shut down this pipeline or we need you to go hack this car factory. No, they're just doing that on their own. And the country turning a blind eye to it is not the same as being complicit. Now, one angle which they could address is there needs to be some kind of international regulation for dealing with criminals. Because typically in the old days, if you were operating within a country as a criminal, you would have to physically be present there. So if Russia doesn't have an extradition policy, no problem. If they're doing crime in America, they're going to be in America at some point. So we'll just pick them up while they're in America. But with cybercrime, you can live entirely in one country and operate entirely in another country, which makes it very hard to enforce different laws of different countries or any international laws. So there probably needs to be a discussion about here are a set of international laws which people can follow and you can't just let your criminals violate them and then refuse to extradite. But that's not really a security solution, that's more of a political one. So that's where we're kind of stuck right now, is from a security standpoint, all we can do is try and just bolster up the security of our networks and hope that it's enough to deter the criminals. Now, one thing ransomware groups have been finding is better and better ways to leverage the companies which they want to get ransoms from. Initially, it was just they would encrypt all of their data and they'd be like, hey, pay us some money and we'll give your data back but companies would have backups. So then they would start finding the backup servers and encrypting those as well. And then they started stealing the data before they encrypted it. And they said, hey, if you don't pay us, we'll not only not decrypt your data, but we'll publish it online for everyone to have. And then they started finding even better ways. Like there was a law firm which represents celebrities that got ransomware last year. And the criminals actually went through all of the legal documents 
and looked for blackmail on celebrities and they said, well, we're going to blackmail the celebrities as well if you don't pay. Then just this year, the DC Police Department got ransomware and they were able to get hold of the list of uh, confidential informants and they threatened to leak that, which would likely result in informants being um, harmed or killed. And the problem is there's just no incentive to not keep just going further and further and further in order to get a better chance at getting a ransom. Now, Darkseid has been typically quite a conservative ransomware organization. They actually, uh, they even state on their site, they won't, won't go after hospitals, they won't go after charities, they won't go after state government systems or federal government systems. So when this uh, pipeline got shut off, they did actually release a statement saying, hey, it wasn't our intention. And honestly, I, I believe them. The way in which ransomware groups operate is hackers can, they will get a foothold in a random network. They will try and compromise the entire network. And then they will sell it on to a ransomware group or they will provide it to a team of a ransomware group. So often these groups are really just ransoming whichever networks their affiliates provide them. And they have no idea even what the company does uh, what the side effects of the ransom are going to be. They just say, hey, this company has 600 million a year in revenue, so we'll make the ransom 20% of that and we'll just hit them. And what likely happened with Colonial Pipeline is their business network got hit. Their, the pipeline probably was fine, but when you're transferring gas, like you have billing and invoices, you know, need to know who's picking up what amount of gas and where without that data even if the pipeline still works it's completely useless so most likely they actually shut off the pipeline as either a safety precaution or because they simply just didn't have the data to know where everything is going and that was just purely a side effect and it wasn't intentional but that's not to say that the next time something like this happens it isn't a group that is less conservative and they're happy to just nuke 50 percent of the east coast oil in return for a bit of money and that's kind of where we stand now is that ransoms are just going to keep getting more and more aggressive and finding better and better ways to make the company pay until we can actually find a way to do something about these untouchable criminals that operate from non-extradition countries now one thing that's actually has been adding fuel to the fire is the coronavirus lockdown um, not explicitly the lockdown itself, but some of the side effects of the lockdown. For instance, when companies started to move to work from home, security researchers were like, we need to audit the software and hardware that allows people to work from home. And this is things like corporate VPN gateways. So security researchers went out and they started auditing all of the corporate VPN gateways and surprise, surprise, they found a bunch of vulnerabilities. And while finding and getting the vulnerabilities patched is good, not everyone installs those security patches. So now you have just hundreds of different vulnerabilities in VPNs that are all available out there on the internet for any hacker to pick up. So what a lot of these groups are doing is they're just going down a list of companies and they're looking for, do they, are they running these vulnerable VPNs? And if yes, then they can hack that and that gives them a foothold within the company network. So it's not just malware that is leading to ransomware, there are actually hackers going directly into companies' networks through these exploits. Now, there's even been proposals to sanction ransomware groups, but one problem we've actually noticed is there is one group known as Evil Corp, which is currently sanctioned, and they sanction it by the ransomware name. They say it is illegal to pay XYZ ransomware. So what does the group do? They rename it to YZX ransomware, and it's like antivirus signatures, but with sanctions. You sanction one name, they change the name. And it's very, very hard to tie down who to sanction because the company is just paying an anonymous entity. They don't know who they're dealing with. So the only thing they have to go off is the payment address and the ransomware, both of which can be changed. So it's very, very hard for sanctions to actually enforce any rules at all. So one of the other proposals was, OK, what if we just make it blanket illegal to pay ransoms? And the problem is there is now you're hitting the victims twice. Now they've lost their data. And also if they pay the ransomware, they're going to get a fine for committing a crime. And because US law only applies to the US, there's nothing stopping them contracting, say, a European company to do ransomware recovery. And that company is like, OK, we're going to recover you from ransomware. And instead of 
rebuilding the network. They go out there and pay the ransom, not at the direction of the company that got ransomware. Then that company has legally not broken the law because they didn't say, hey, go out and pay this ransom and get our data back. The company did it at their own discretion. So there's all these different loopholes that are gonna, companies are gonna use to get around and pay the ransom anyway.